Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. So today we're going to do some physical exploit labs uh, associated with alarm bypasses. And you can follow along with this directly on physsec.org and just go to the bypass-game, so the URL up top, or you can click one of these down uh, things right here and that will get you there by hitting bypass games. So once you get there, you can hit show levels and the drop down will show you 10 different levels. We're going to solve a bunch of them and talk about what's going on there so that you can solve the rest yourself by applying the knowledge that you learn as we go through this. I'm not an electronics person, so I'll probably misstate some stuff. You're just going to have to get over it, but we're going to have a little bit of fun here. So first off is normally open on level one. So when something is normally open, it means that the there's no current flowing through that wire. So essentially, you could probably just cut this wire if there's no like end of line resistor doing any kind of tamper detection or anything like that. And you should be able to bypass the alarm system. Now we see down here that we have a door and if we open that door, we get an alarm state here. If we close that door, the alarm state goes away and the magnet goes back up here in the sensor. Now we wanna bypass that. We can do that with the tools over here on the side. So if we click one of these tools, like the cutter here, and we hover over it, it will highlight and we can just click and we just cut the wire. And you'll notice that there's no current running through this wire and we just cut it. So now it can't communicate with the sensor and basically there's no alarm. And if we open up the door, even if we're taking away the sensor, there's no way for it to communicate with the zone. So we're good to go. So the zones in these alarm systems basically if you had a house, you might have your downstairs on a zone and your upstairs on a zone. If you have a large office, you might have it zoned out in different sections so that when an alarm goes off, they know where to go to. In this case, we have zone one, which is going to this door. And that's the quick bypass on level one. Just super simple, you know, normally open circuit. So nothing fancy there. Next up, we have a normally closed circuit, which means there is a current running through there. So if we cut this, it's likely going to disrupt something the same as when we pull away this sensor over here. So right now we have an alarm state and if I was to cut this wire, the alarm goes off, I open the door, also still going, right? So we have this 12 volts going through this line right now. So let me refresh this page and we'll see that we have a line voltage of zero right here and supply voltage of 12. Now we can measure that by stripping the wire. So if we hover over with this stripper, we'll split the lines and there's a ground and a power here. And what we can do is we can grab this volometer here and we can grab a tap. And if you hover over the wire, you can put a tap here. You hover over and you put a tap here. And we wanna see what's going on. So this would be the same as you know taking a multimeter and measuring the wires. So what we're gonna do is gonna grab a wire. I'm just gonna use the same colors as uh, are on here. That way it uh, just is clear of what I'm doing. So I just click the end here, I click the end here, and then it connected. So I'm gonna grab a red one here just to keep the colors the same. And you'll see that we have zero volts here and we want that to continue. But if we cut these wires, we are going to get that line voltage of 12 right here. So we need to stop that. So how do we do that? Well, we know that when these wires are connected, they have zero volts here and we don't want it to get triggered when we open the door. So with this normally open system and not having a resistor at the end, we could just join the wires together. So if I grab this here and we just grab a wire, um, I'll just grab a gray one here what we're gonna do is just gonna connect, because this is connected all the way through here, so it'd be the same as directly connecting it to this wire. I'm gonna grab another one, and we're gonna join it together. So right now, basically we have these two wires, we just join them together, and you'll see we still have zero, zero volts. And if I open up this door, it still says it's okay. So basically, we could now cut these wires. Bam, and then it still works even when we open up the door because we shorted out this wire together. So if I was to just reset this really quick and we click here and we strip it, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab a tap and we're gonna do it without the volometer this time. We're just going to put things together. So we're just gonna hit this join. 
And we're gonna short these two wires together. So I'll grab this gray one again. Really doesn't matter what color you do. It's just basically how clear do you want it to be? What makes sense in your brain as you're doing it here? Whatever colors don't matter, except for the person who's reviewing your work if you use non-standard colors. So right now we have this wire shorted out together and it will keep his voltage at zero. So if we open up the door, should be good to go and we can cut this wire. So we didn't really need this volumeter. It was just to give us the values that we were already getting down here of the line voltage being zero, supply voltage being 12, and it changing when we open the door. So if I was to do this again, you'll see that it jumps up to this 12 when we opened up the door, which is why we shorted them together to keep it at zero. So hopefully that makes sense. And this is all without an end of line resistor. When you add the end of line resistor, which we're gonna do in a moment, that will start having some tamper things and checking for the proper um, current level going through there. So next up, we're gonna do a level three. Uh, this is a normally closed with a 2K end of line resistor, EOLR, and it's on a permissive controller. We have permissive and we have sensitive, so the sensitive ones will be a little more sensitive to the values. All right, so with this, we have our end of line resistor here, and that is going to check that, you know, if we were just to short these together and we have zero volts, it's looking for six volts down here. So it's gonna basically say, hey, this is not right, and it's gonna throw an alarm, same as if we open up the door. So what we wanna do is we wanna strip these, and normally we wouldn't have these values available to us, so we wanna measure that. So what we're gonna do is grab this volumeter again. I'm gonna put this down here. We're gonna tap the wires, click it, hover till we get to where it's highlighted. And so now we have those there and we can connect it to our volumeter. I'm gonna use the same colors so we just know what we're doing here. And again, I'm just clicking each end which solders these on here. So it's showing, hey, we have six volts running through this wire. So we want this to stay at six volts. So how do we do that? Well, we can use something called a Zyner diode. So what we wanna do is grab a value that's close to that. So if we look over here, we have like 5.6, 6.2. So we could try like a 5.6 volt. And if we put that here and Basically with the diodes, the current will only want run one way through the wire and not the other way. And with the Zener diode, it'll set it to that 5.6 volts, which is pretty close to six. And depending how much variance this alarm system allows us, it may or may not work. So we'll grab a wire here and we'll just grab like this yellow one. And we'll say, okay, let's connect this ground over to this side. We'll connect this over to here. So we're basically just reversing these wires because so it flows the correct way through so we get that six volts. And you're seeing now, as we put it through here, this volumeter says we're at five points, or 5.603. You'll also notice the alarm didn't go off with this 5.6028 it's measuring down here, which is close to 03. So if we open up the door now, there's no alarm that's going off. It's changing the voltage slightly down here on this zone and on the volumeter, but none of this is enough to trigger it because we pretty have a pretty high tolerance with it. So if we were to cut these wires again now, we should be good to go. So now with these wires cut and we just need the diode, we don't actually need the volumeter. This is just us measuring it with a multimeter to know, you know how much voltage is going through there. We now have bypassed that alarm system. So next up, let's try something else here. So now we have a normally open, that this one was normally closed. Now, again, it's kind of the same thing, even though it's normally open, normally closed, really we're just worried about this line voltage staying the same. We don't want a variance where, you know, this um, resistor up here, when it's checking, uh, if anything's going wrong, it's gonna cause some kind of tamper situation. So again, we can just measure this out. So we wanna strip the wires with the wire stripper, click it, then click when it highlights it, and we can put a tap on the wires. And hopefully I'm explaining this so you can understand. Um, it's not that complicated if you know a little bit of electronics like I do, 
But if it's your first time, just take your time with it, play with it, measure things out and see, you know, you know, what's going on. That's why measuring all this stuff is important. So we want to put this down here and measure what is the voltage going through here. We see down here 9.6, but you know, we're normally not going to have that value. So we want to measure it ourselves with our multimeter. So again, I'm going to grab wires that just match up. So it's just clear what I'm doing. I've got my red there and we have our black. So the ground and the electricity and it measures out to 9.6. <clears throat> so with the 9.6 going through here, again, we can do a similar situation. It doesn't really matter in this case whether it's normally open or normally closed. We know there's 9.6 because of this resistor at the end of the line, which is checking for that value. So let's hop down here. So 9.6, we can grab maybe, let's try a 9.1 and we'll see if that works. Because again, I believe this one says that it's permissive, not sensitive. So it's got a pretty good leeway on how much variance there can be. So we're gonna grab a gray here and we're just gonna say, go from this side over to here. And again, these Zener diodes, the you know current only flows one way through there and then it's gonna set that value to the 9.10. Um, so now we have 9.10 down here. If I open up the door, it does alarm. It's dropping it down here, but it didn't alarm when I put it through here. So let's cut the wires because opening up the door might have given enough variance to freak out potentially. So let's cut these wires, cut and cut, and you'll see it didn't go off and it's no longer connected to here. So it shouldn't go off when I open up the door. So there's another situation there and how to do that. Now, another thing that's important to know is that we're gonna be doing this during the daytime because during the daytime, the alarms are probably not set, but you might have access to like the conduit or something of that nature where you can get in there and mess with the wires. Now, typically I wouldn't do this on a penetration test because I don't have permission to do so, but it's good to know how it's doing it so that you can talk to that if they had the conduit exposed or a wire exposed. You know exactly what's going on. You wanna be educated on how these things are working and explain to the client what you would do if you were able to. Now, if we hop back here, we bypass that. Now, you guys, we did all of these. Now, these other two permissive ones should be very similar. You just have to follow the same process we just did of measuring stuff. So I'm gonna leave level five and six to you guys to mess with, and we're just gonna go to a sensitive controller now. So this one's gonna be a little more sensitive, and putting in a Zener diode in here may not work. We might have to do something a little bit more complicated so that the... Um, you know, the voltage going through this line, the current is closer to the value if we don't have something closer here. So again, we're gonna strip this wire and then we're going to tap the wire. And you'll notice we have the two um, diodes over here that are checking for that tamper. And we're going to grab a volometer again and I'm going to connect this up. All right, so it says we have six volts going on here. Give me one second. All right, so we have six volts going on there, and then what we're going to do next is we're gonna to try to just do a diode, right? and we're gonna see if it's working. So we had before when we had six volts, we had the 5.6, so let's see if that works. And because this is sensitive, it might not be close enough and it might alarm out on us. And we'll fix that if that is the case. So we're gonna go here and then solder it over to here. Go over here and we're gonna solder over here and we get a tamper situation right here. That's one of the other states that you can get. And if we open up the door, it's going to alarm. So we have a tamper and we have an alarm and we have a tamper because we have a 5.6 value. It's looking for six and this value is too far off. So we actually have to get a little bit more data. Here's what we're gonna do because we need this a bit more precise. We need to do a bit more calculation. So we're gonna strip that wire again. We're gonna tap it and we're gonna get the volts. You guys already know how to do that, so set that up. We got the two taps, and we got this volometer here, so 
hook up the wires. We got the red, I got the black, and that should give us the six volts that we saw before. So now we have six volts. And then now we wanna find another number with the amps in order to calculate the resistance on the line. So we can use a specific size resistor instead of the 5.6 with the six volts, which is a 0.4 difference. We wanna get something that's smaller because this is a little bit more sensitive in what it's measuring. So we're gonna grab this other meter here and we're gonna hook them together. I'm just gonna use a green line for that. Just gonna go green to green. And then we're gonna hook up a switch so we can turn our attack on and off and we'll run things through this. So I'm gonna throw another tap. So we tap the other side of the line and hook it up to the switch, which means we can cut the wire between these guys in a second. And then we're gonna hook this up to our other thing here. One second. All right, so we're gonna hook up this one to here, which completes that, and then we should be able to cut the line between them. And then we get two values. So the difference between these two values is the resistance that we need to put on the line in order to make the values close to being exactly what we need for a non-alarm state. So what we can do is we can divide that out. So I'm gonna grab a calculator here, and we're gonna divide this number by this number. So we're gonna say five, dot nine zero two and we're gonna divide that by three dot zero four nine and we get one dot nine three so if we use a one dot nine three resistor or something very close that gives us a closer value than just using that zener diode of a 0.4 difference then we should be good to go so if we look down here at the resistors we're gonna look for some 1.93 K so we have a 1.96 K which 0.03 is a lot closer than 0.4 of the Zener diode being at 6 and 5.6. So let's connect that through here with our switch so we can turn it on and off and go, you know, whether the wires are cut versus whether the resistor is going through there showing the resistance. And let's see, we'll grab a gray wire. I'm just going to hook up the black to one side of it. And since our switch is controlling things, we're gonna go from our switch to the other side of it. And then we are going to open up our, well, first we're gonna turn on the switch so that our attack is in play. And then we're gonna open up our door and nothing happens, so that's a good thing. Now, if we have our switch off here and we open it, our alarm sounds because now we have some wires cut here and we're not going through this resistor. But when we turn it on and we have the resistor there and it's having the proper resistance on the line, we are good to go when the door is open. We can actually cut both of these wires at this point and the resistor is handling the situation, it's making it look like the door was never opened and the resistance is proper on the line. So that's a little bit more complicated, but it's good when it's a little bit more sensitive and you have to get the values a little closer. We had to use a different technique and do a little bit more calculation there. So hopefully that was all useful for you. Now there's a couple other labs here and they're kind of mystery labs. It says level eight, nine, and 10. And if you click in these, you'll see that there's no data here, which means you have to do the measurements yourself, strip the wires, figure it out, and alarm it up. Some of these are easy, some of them are harder. So use what you know and try to just figure this out based on doing the calculations. That way you solidify some of the knowledge you learned in here. Now again, I'm not an electronics guy, so if I screwed up some terminology in here, I apologize. I'm just getting some of the information across to you guys and hopefully it's useful. Now, with that said, enjoy, have fun, give me a like and a subscribe if you learned something useful.